Welcome to the 8th edition of World Intellectual Property Forum. The inaugural ceremony will be starting in few minutes. Chief Guest Shri Suresh Prabhu, Guests of Honor, Distinguished Delegates, it is my great pleasure to extend a very warm welcome to all of you on this 8th edition of the World Intellectual Property Forum. During the most challenging and difficult circumstances of the COVID-19 pandemic, which has of course, seen such widespread suffering and economic disruption, despite which our participants and organizers are here, having worked hard and tirelessly to make this event a grand success. I would specifically like to thank the organizers of WIPF whose dedication and efforts have built up a family of speakers, have paid close attention to bringing before us the most fascinating IP topics and themes from around the world, and have taken us in the past to beautiful destinations like Dubai, Bangkok, Taipei, apart from Bangalore and New Delhi. The theme for this conference is Atmanirbhav Bharat, Innovate, Protect and Promote. And the program covers a wide range of topics on patent law, on artificial intelligence, Internet of Things, and several Internet and other issues relating to the digital economy on trade secrets, fake news, SMEs, startups, etc. Atmanirbhav Bharat means a self-reliant India. On the 15th of October 2020, on the occasion of the IP Literary Week, which ran from 15th to the 23rd of October, the Union Education Minister, Mr. Ramesh Pokhrial, said, and I quote, to lead India on the path of self-reliance, inventions would not be enough, and patenting those inventions would be necessary to realize the Atmanirbha Bharat dream. He was launching Kapila, the Kalam program for intellectual property, literacy and awareness. Let me take a few minutes to examine how we seem to have done in the past few months and particularly during the lockdown. First, around the 15th of April 2020, intellectual property started coming up before courts through a WebEx virtual court system. And the most startling discovery was that this experiment was highly successful. Judges and lawyers apart, they adapted well to the system. First, in the first phase, very, very urgent matters were taken up and then 
urgent matters and finally today all matters are coming up before virtual courts. Serious arguments were being addressed, detailed orders and judgments are being passed. The lawyers were using all devices, laptops, desktop computers, iPads and even cell phones. And the interesting thing was that people were appearing all around the country in all the courts. And all courts means district courts, high courts, the Supreme Court, the Internet Intellectual Property Appellate Board, IPAB, the Patent Office. And even clients were attending hearings, uh, promoting a great degree of transparency. There was a lot of saving of travel time, saving of paper, and so it appeared to, to be more environmental friendly, the whole experiment. Apart from litigation matters, mediation, pre-litigation mediation, and even trials were coming up before virtual courts. It is not clear today as to what percentage of cases in future will be done by physical courts uh, and what by virtual courts. This is something to be seen. Second, it was a painful time for health, business, family, friendships, but human greed has not ebbed, diminished or subsided. Piracy rates have gone up as more and more people resort to digital solutions for most of their needs. Cases of comparative advertising, defamation, intermediary liability went up. Very interesting questions came up before the court. Is a certain entity an intermediary within the definition of the IT Act? If an intermediary is the entity entitled to protection of the safe, har safe harbor provisions of Section 79, have they exercised the necessary due diligence in terms of the uh, IT Act, the IT rules, the press note number two, and other provisions? Um, some interesting cases that came up. One was the Budweiser case, where somebody had uh, advertised that Budweiser's employees micturate in their beer, and that was restrained by the Delhi High Court. There was a case relating to catch spices, where there was a video which said that all Indian spices have excreta and urine in them, and that was restrained by the Delhi High Court. There was a Corona beer case where the rival beer company formed a semicircle of beer bottles with Corona in the middle with an arrow pointing between Corona and a few of those bottles on the circumference saying social distancing, thereby implying keep your distance from Corona. That was also immediately responded, um, restrained by the Delhi High Court. Cases relating to spurious masks, spurious sanitizers, using Louis Vuitton as a brand, using Tommy Hilfiger as a brand, were restrained by the Delhi High Court. In patent cases, mostly the prominent ones were in pharmaceuticals and telecom, both cellular and non-cellular, such as video coding and issues, um, complex issues came up in pharmaceuticals. Some very successful cases, um, the AstraZeneca 14 lawsuits, which are now currently in appeal related to the molecule dapagliflozin, where there was a conflict of opinion on several issues between two judges, 
relating to the same molecule, same patents, and the same plaintiffs, but different defendants. These complex issues involved issues like the genus species debate, prior claiming, terminal disclaimers, and certain other subtle legal patent issues. The Bristol Myers Squibb and Pfizer decisions of Apixa ban are also in appeal, and the appeals are being heard by the Chief Justice's court. The trend of many generic companies joining hands against the innovators is a relatively new trend, although one saw a glimpse of this in the Novartis case, in the Supreme Court, in the past. Fundamental issues of interpretation are now involved in these cases, which are in appeal, which will decide the future of innovation in the health industry in India in, in future. Then there were the uh, cases in the telecom field. Interdigital was a very interesting case where after um, there was a lawsuit filed in Wuhan in China and a lawsuit filed before the Delhi High Court. And the Wuhan court in China passed an anti-suit injunction restraining the plaintiff in India from prosecuting their lawsuit. And thereafter, the Delhi High Court passed an anti-anti-suit injunction, which was possibly the third of its kind in the world. And this is currently being, um, being argued. It's not yet finally determined. But uh, it's a very interesting point, which some of you would like to take note of. The IPAB, in the meantime, was very active, passing the Ferid Elani case on software patents, interpreting Section 31K on technical effect and granting the patent. A very positive order for the telecom and the software industry. IPAB also passed the Ibrutinic pharmacyclics case granting the patent um, and, uh, or, and, and of course the tofacitinib Pfizer case which were also very well reasoned extensive orders passed. On trade secrecy there were some disturbing orders where lack of protection pointed to the need to have a statute or else we may go three steps forward and two steps back. Two cases which were which went against the plaintiff, Professor Claudia Simon versus Actial Pharmaceutica and Sun uh, Grow, Sun Grow, which involved a combination of trade secrets and plant variety uh, issues. On remedies. Uh, while damages, both compensatory and punitive, and even aggravated damages, were being granted by courts, the where defendants could not afford to pay damages, or in cases where they had committed contempt, the courts went a step further and made them compensate in another way. The Merck Tree Order was a particularly notable one, where the defendant was directed to plant 140,000 trees on the ridge area in Delhi. And the, um, um, the uh, beneficiary, the benefit of that would go uh, to the plaintiff, um, corporate social responsibility benefit. The public would, of course, gain, and the defendant was made to pay. So it turned out to be a win-win-win. But lots of these uh, orders where the defendant couldn't pay, but was made to pay in some other form by making, let's say, the defendant in the Hermes case uh, provide uh, sanitary napkins for adolescent girls uh, in schools that could not afford uh, sanitary towels. Uh, those, those kind of donations, um, donations of uh, water coolers, of sporting equipment, etc., 
those were all uh, methods by which the defendants were made to pay if they could not pay in cash. The, on copyright, the television and internet, um, television, internet and software cases uh, went up a little. Um, the ISRA battles on music continue as a fight between performance performers and the recording companies and those are yet to, to be finally decided. You will of course hear about all these issues which I've very briefly touched upon over the next two days um, in the various panel discussions. Let me now conclude to say that when the pandemic will end is not clearly known to anyone. But the pandemic has taught us many things. Of course, sanitizers and masks, uh, tidy homes, spotless fridges, but much, at a much deeper level, it has forced us to think where we are going, to cherish deeper human values, to push towards kindness and generosity and avoid reducing um, ourselves to the trivial. To this great family of world leaders in the IP profession, my wish and hope is that you devote a slice of your energy as you move forward in your lives to celebrate and value innovation, creativity and intellectual property, to benefit individual creators, enterprises, enterprises, governments, public and the world at large, whose efforts are responsible for all the solutions to the problems that we are currently facing and likely to face in the future, and whose creative output is helping us remain safe, healthy, and of course, maintain our sanity. Thank you.